What's up, Puzzlers? It's your boy JTL who's back in with another video. You know every time you see the green screen behind me, it's going to be a reaction video. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is one of the videos that was sent in from a member of the Hustle fam. Just like I told you guys, if anybody out on the platform makes high-quality entrepreneurial content, send it to me, and I definitely want to react to it. Uh, this gentleman's name is Kenyon Ken. His channel's name Uh I'm going to link his channel down below. You guys probably already know who he is. He has a huge channel uh, teaching people about entrepreneurship. And my hat's off to him for doing so. I haven't seen this video before. So we're going to learn some things together here in this video about the best way to start a car dealership. The crazy thing is, is how much you guys actually remember. I told you guys one of the things that was on my list this year which um, I don't know if we're going to get to it or not with this whole pandemic thing. But I actually still have the paperwork on my desk over here um to start a car dealership so uh it just is crazy how how much you guys remember um i don't take it for granted i appreciate you um for doing so and yeah this is one of the businesses that i was sincerely thinking about investing in and um i didn't even know this video existed at the moment so i'm definitely going to learn something i'm gonna document it with you guys and react to it so you could possibly learn something together as well go ahead and like this video now Share it with anybody you think it can help. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, if you are not already subscribed to his channel, again, check the description. I'm going to link his video down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the reaction. What's up? It's the Shark Damon John here, and I want to shout out JT Hustles. Yo, yo, shout out to JT Hustles for teaching people how to become entrepreneurs on YouTube and all over social media. how to start your own used car dealership for those of you who don't know me my name is kenyon i turned 21 today I'm an yo yo we moving way too fast 21 that make me a, like a whole grandpa out here like yo i'm 29 and i'm <sighs> yo at 21 i i didn't become an entrepreneur until i was like 24 um, I don't know how long he's already been one, but the fact that whenever he did this video, you know what I mean, he turned 21, tell me he was doing it since before he was 21. So, hey, salute to you, my brother. Hey, I don't know you personally, but just on that accomplishment alone, man, hey, I'm a whole grandpa out here. Try and find new ways to make money, and then I share them with you guys. Uh, I used to sell candy in high school. That's like my number one video right now. And right now, we are headed to my office. I gotta go pay my rent. So you guys are coming along with me. I'll show you guys exactly. Hold on, hold on. Yo, been trapping early. Selling candy in school. Already got an office. Yo, what a... Hey, this video might mess with my self-confidence a little bit. Like, hey, what what in the world am I doing wrong? Like, you know what I mean? I'm doing all right. I'm making a little money too. But, yo, pff, hey, double salute. Group dealership looks like. I plan on taking you guys inside a dealer's only auction too so you can see what cars are selling. And we got a long drive, so we got to get going. It's raining. Okay, so I first got into the whole car flipping scene about a year after high school. Uh, I graduated in 2015, and one day my aunt hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to go to a car auction with me? She told me the cars sell pretty cheap, and I was really looking for another source of money. So I went with her to one of these auctions. They were called OPG auctions, and it's like when someone gets their car repoed for not paying DME fees, it gets auctioned away. I had a that's, a that's a nugget right there. OPG auctions. I appreciate that. Also, um... Some of you guys know it if you a day one subscriber to this channel that um I told you guys I wasn't right out of high school but when I was in the Marine Corps um back hundred years ago um I flipped cars and we I was making more money um flipping cars in the Marine Corps just using Craigslist than I was making in my base pay as like um a corporal in the Marine Corps so it's definitely some money in cars uh facts like but yo. I'm blown away that he got in the game so early. Savings from selling candy, and I had a little eBay business back then, and I had roughly like a thousand dollars. So I went to one of these auctions one day and managed a thousand dollars. Like yo, granted, I know the, the audience that follows me, you're a little bit older, so a thousand dollars ain't no money. So 
But put it into context, a thousand dollars when you was fresh out of high school was like ten thousand dollars would be today, or a hundred thousand dollars would be today, depending on you know how you getting money now at this point in your life. Right after high school, we broke, 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 five broke. We ain't got it. Got a 2001 Nissan Pathfinder for $945. At the time, that car was selling for like $2,500. It had a really good engine. It had a pretty good transmission. Uh, it was also four-wheel drive. Anyway, to sum this up, I ended up selling the car for $2,000. And then after flipping one more car, which was a 2001 Chevy Suburban, I decided to just try and get my dealer's license. But I'm about to get on the freeway right now, so I'll get back to you guys when I get off. <laughs> Okay, so the first step to getting your license is to take a mandatory pre-licensing class. It's like a five to seven hour class. You don't have to take it with DMV. There's so many private people who do this class. The one I took was honestly really chill and they just explained everything you needed to know to be a dealer. Then after you take that class, you have to pass a test with DMV, a 50 question test. They give you like an hour to go through the questions. Um, and yeah, it's not that hard. And I will get back to you guys when we get to the office. Focus. It's on. Okay, so we're at my office right now, guys. Got the keys right here. Let's go. Okay, so the number one thing I hear people say you need when becoming a car dealer is a giant car lot. And most people don't know that that's not true. This is the building my office is in, and there's actually about 10 other approved dealers in the same office. All you need to become an approved dealer is an office of any size and two parking spaces. Uh, Yo! Granted, um, the approach that I want to take is um, I want to own the building, but you guys know that's just personal bias with me. Um, he already told you it's not required, um, and I don't know if it's state specific, um, which you know I'm doing my own due diligence. I'll find out, update you um, as I progress to, if it's any different in my state uh, in North Carolina. I'm not sure where he's from, to be honest with you, but um, yo, if that's universal. <laughs> I could do that now. Like, yo, I could rent a building, get two spaces now. And yo, I'm pretty good at taking tests. I got a I got a whole master's degree. Like, you know what I mean? Granted, I'm like a granddaddy compared to how young this dude is. Um, and if yo, I, I don't even know what date he dropped this video. So by now, yo, he might have crazy size dealership if, if he's still doing it. Thank you right now. So all these signs right here are called display areas, and it's mandatory to have these to get approved as a dealer. So just so you guys know, there are two types of dealers. There's wholesale and there's retail. You can actually become a wholesaler from out of your garage. Um, to become a re- This how we hustle. I did not know that. It sounds crazy. Hey, this proves that you can learn something from anybody, right? I've been so focused on, like, what paperwork do I need to fill out? Um, yo, where are we going to go get the cars from? How are we going to market it? Granted, all of this stuff was in the plan. Hey, we got to figure out all of this as well. But it just wasn't my primary focus. My primary focus was, yo, let's get the paperwork. Let's fill it out. Let's turn it in. Let's get the license. Where are we going to get the cars from? How are we going to market it? But, of course, I was going to learn the law because uh, I believe there's too many legal ways to make money for us to go out and do something stupid and risk our life. And or risk our freedom to get some money. So I'm sure I would have heard about it eventually, but eventually could be months from now, especially with the pandemic, because ain't nobody really thinking about, at least in my area where I want to do it at, people ain't really thinking about I need a new car right now. Um, but I know they will after this is over. And he just cut months off of uh, my research time, right? Granted, like I said again, and I encourage you as well, do your research. Um, make sure that it's not different if you're in another state. Um, Because like I said, I don't know what state he's in. But, yo, I hope it's like that regardless of what state you're in. Tell her you have to have an office like like the one I have here. I'm already telling her. And then with the wholesale license, you don't have to have a display area either. I actually started as a wholesaler out of my garage and then moved up to retail. Which, if you're just getting started, I recommend you do that. Yo. He might have just sold me on putting a garage 
at the property that we renovating. And matter of fact, I know somebody that was trying to sell me a car, but they, they just was trying to get me to come to their house and I was like not feeling it. They probably, now that I know this, they probably were just wholesaling. All right, here's the front entrance and my office is upstairs. Okay, so this is what my office looks like. You have to have a table to get approved, and you have to have a locking file cabinet to get approved. You also gotta have a business phone. Then there are certain signs you gotta put up in order to get approved. Um, I took all of mine down just because they have my address and like super personal information on them, so I don't, I can't blast that on the internet. But I was using this example for my step-by-step -step dealership guide. You have to have a board of equalization seller's permit, which is easy to get. You have to have a city business license, which is super easy to get. And then you have to have these two public notices. Yo, but for real, if you want an in-depth step by step guide go to my website and buy my course but here's one more look at the office this is an already approved retail car dealership office and i'm gonna put you guys down because i gotta pay my rent what the mm -hmm. get to go look at the so i guess he's in california um with this since that was the the website joint that came up all the vending machines are broken Okay, so in case you're wondering how much I pay for this place, my office is $550 a month. But since that allows me to be a retail dealer and make way more money off of each car I sell, it's worth every penny. But $550 a month. Office. Also, please don't show up at my office, guys. I'm not trying to get kicked out. Get your merch, KenyonKen.com. And now we're going to head to the auction. Okay, so like I said earlier, I recommend if you're going to get into the car industry, you start out as a wholesaler out of your garage. That way you won't be locked into a lease, so if you don't like it, you can just stop. And the only monthly cost you'll have is your insurance. But I'll get back to you guys and explain more to you when we get to the auction. Catch you guys in a bit. Yo, I need a lighter camera. My hand hurts so much. Hey, go follow him. After you watch this video, if you haven't done so already. Alright guys, so we made it to the auction. This auction's called AutoNation Auction. Uh, and here is my auction access pass. This lets me get into any auction in the United States. I recommend the first thing you do when you start your dealership is get an auction access pass. And let's go inside. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know that you could only come on Thursdays. So I made it inside the lot. Here's what the lot looks like. Here's where they store all their cars. And all of these cars are going to be sold this week. This auction runs about 400 cars every single Friday. And this is a small auction. The bigger auctions run like thousands every single week. All Great. these cars are going to sell for a lot less than the retail value so dealers can make their money. Unlike the public police auctions, they tell you here if the engine's messed up, if the transmission's messed up, if it's a salvage title, uh, they let you know everything beforehand. So that way you don't buy a bad car. When you're checking out a car, you want to check to make sure the windows work. Because sometimes they don't, and if they don't, that's a problem. You want to check to make sure the AC works and the heater works. Of course, you want to check the transmission. Uh, make sure it just goes into gear right, and we're good. And once this thing's warm, I'm going to make sure it hits the higher RPMs. Someone put an exhaust kit on this car. It sounds so much better than the stock one. And we're good. And I only do that because sometimes you'll rev a car, and it'll only rev to like 4,000 RPMs, and you know something's wrong with the engine, so you always got to check that. But let's get going to the next car. Okay, so when I buy cars, I like to stick to Japanese-made cars. They're super cheap to fix, they don't really break down that much, and they're a lot more reliable than American-made cars. So that's what I'm looking out for right now. And the first thing you want to do when you buy a car is check the registration. You want to see how much it owes... You want to see how much it owes in fees to DMV. <laughs> then you take that number, figure out how much it's going to cost you to fix it up, figure out the price you could sell it for, and then you come up with your maximum bid. And most of these cars will sell from anywhere from 1000 to 2000 to even like four or 5000 below the retail value. Sometimes they'll have some really, really nice cars at these auctions. I've seen brand new Porsche 911s. I've seen a I8. I haven't seen a Lambo yet, but hopefully soon. Oh, I just got four-wheel drive. It's got a check engine light. One thing you do have to be careful at these auctions is people like to clear the code so you can't see what's wrong with the car. Uh, so I recommend you get an OBD2 reader. I didn't bring mine with me, but I'm gonna bring it tomorrow when I come to this auction. That's important, keep that in mind. Most of the time it's because they need new catalytic converters, so people just sell them instead of instead of fixing them themselves. These Altimas are cool, they usually go for really cheap. Anything past 2011 goes for usually under $3,000. I forgot to mention the next step to starting your dealership is you need a $10,000 bond. Uh, that's for if you want to be a wholesaler. If you want to be a retail dealer, you need a $50,000 bond. But don't don't let that fool you. A $50,000 bond only costs like 500 bucks if you have good credit. 
You should be able to get your entire dealership up and running for about 3500 bucks. But just thought I'd let you guys know that. That pretty much everything I'm going to bid on tomorrow, and I'm going to head out. There you have it, you guys. I learned a lot. Hopefully, you learned something as well. For those of you that have any questions, comments, concerns, you can go hit him up, follow his channel, or you can put them down in the comment section below. Hit that thumbs up button on this video. Share this video again. And until next time, so I'm a hustler, stay hustling. Hey, keep sending me vids. Keep sending me vids like this. Yo, because I'm learning something, learning a lot. Especially if you know some female entrepreneurs that's killing it. But even if you don't, hey, we'll keep reacting to the fellas um, until we find some female hustlers that's uploading content. Uh, and it's going to be all entrepreneur-related reactions on this channel. I don't know nobody else that's uploading entrepreneur related reactions so we gonna make it a thing to all my hustlers stay hustling jt hustles i'm gone